Welcome to the Microgreens Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Jonah Krokmalnik. Together, we'll explore the art of turning tiny seeds into a thriving microgreens empire, sharing insights, coveted secrets, and strategic wisdom from building one of Canada's largest microgreens farms. Stay tuned for thought-provoking conversations with leading figures in the world of microgreens. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. On today's episode, we have Laura Patterson from Handgrown Greens in Seattle, Washington. I'm really, really excited for you all to hear this conversation and this powerful story of how Laura got started in microgreens. We touch a lot on mindset and setting yourself up for success in starting a microgreens business in this episode. Laura is also a fellow educator in the microgreens space, and it was really great to hear her perspective on running a microgreens business and helping educate others on how transformative migraines businesses can be. Let's get right into today's episode. Hey, Laura, welcome to the podcast. I'm really, really excited to have you on today. Yeah, thanks, Jonah. I'm I'm excited to chat with you too. Awesome. Um, So yeah, let's let's just get right into it. I'd love to hear kind of how you got started in migraines and how uh, the backstory of hand-grown greens uh, came to be. Sure. Um, Well, I... uh... I spent most of my adult life from graduating college on um, as a registered nurse. That's what I went to school with, and that's what I, I dove into. So my background is really in traditional healthcare, um, and I did that for 12 years. I would say the last five of that years, I was starting to get pretty discontent. Uh, I went into nursing you know, young, very optimistic about having a really positive impact on the world and thought this was a way that I could influence uh, my community for good and take care of people. And uh, over the years, I started to kind of become less aligned with uh, Western medicine in general. I had some health issues myself, and I feel like this is a common thread with with new farmers is you have some health issue and you, once you kind of get to the root of how can I really become the healthiest version of myself, you realize it comes down to what we eat, right? So that was kind of how it started in my brain was thinking, you know, if there's something else that I could do, what I would love to do is be a farmer. Uh, But then there was this really practical side of me that thought, well, I went to school, um, went to college. This is my degree. This is my experience. This is a really solid job. I've got health insurance and all of this, you know, all the, all the practical things. So I kind of stuck with it. Uh, but I kept seeing, feeling like I was just treating just the, the tiniest part of what was going on with people. You know, you have all this underlying issues, why people end up in the hospital, why people are unwell. And I felt like we were throwing medications or treatments at the most surface symptoms and never addressing those deeper issues. And as a, as a nurse, really don't, you're, you're pretty much following a care plan that's laid out by a, by a, a physician. So it just became more and more of a struggle, um, particularly because the job took a lot out of me. Um, I put a lot into it. So by the time I got home, I was wiped out. Um, I was telling you before, I'm very introverted. So spending 12 hours talking with patients and families and all of this would would tire me out. I would get home uh, and be tired out. When I started to have kids, um, that became to, started to really bother me um, because I thought the best of me is going into this job that I don't even fully believe in. And when I come home, I am worn out, exhausted, just feel burned out from being at the hospital doing all this. And, and I'm not really present for my own little kids who are who need me so long story right kind of (laughs) highlighting this is my turmoil that went on for years um, because I was scared and unsure and honestly didn't have a lot of confidence that I could be successful in something else so I started uh, growing microgreens not to thinking I was going to make money with it at all just thinking I need something because I feel like my whole life is just work at the hospital or household tasks taking care of I had a baby and a toddler at that point and so I wanted to start growing something I had tried to do a garden and was just a failure at it which is <laughs> it's not it just did not have the time and energy to put into it so I, I found out about microgreens you know 
found some YouTube video that got me excited thinking, well, this I could do a couple minutes a day. Probably I could grow some windowsill microgreens with my, with my toddler. And, and it got me so excited. Seeing those little greens growing made me feel like this is something that I truly love growing food and watching my kiddo get excited about it too. That was like a win-win. So watching him, he was already kind of a picky eater. So having him want to eat these little greens that we'd grown together and just how fast they grew, the whole thing, everything about microgreens got me excited. The, the, um, the nutritional aspects, the, the cycles of growth just felt very therapeutic for me when I, um, in the life I was in. So I started to grow more and more. It's kind of a long story. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but, keep um, going. This is great. Yeah. So I just started to grow more for myself, for my family. Um, and I loved the growing. I, I told myself I did it for my kids to start, but really it became kind of a therapy for me and just watching mm. those seeds grow and have living greens around me every day. Uh, felt really right. Uh, and so I started to grow more and more. And then I thought, well, I've got more than we can eat. How many trays of microgreens can one family eat? Because uh, I switched over to trays, you know, I, I'm, I'm following the different YouTube, but I'm trying to figure things out. And that was kind of the fun of it, too. Uh, so I got one one restaurant near me that I connected with. They said, yeah, we'd love to buy. So I started with just that one customer and I grew just growing in a t on a small rack, not even, you know, the big, just a little rack, a few little trays for that one customer. And what that did was it just opened my eyes to the potential. I thought, you know, if I actually put some time and effort into this, I bet I could do this. I love it. I believe in it. Uh, for me, what I craved maybe more than anything. I craved meaning, right? I wanted to do something that felt meaningful, but I really wanted flexibility. Uh, for me, having young kids and seeing that life, you never know, didn't always know how days were gonna go. Um, I really wanted the flexibility and my work at the hospital just did not provide that for me. So that's what got me started thinking I should start my own business and really started as a side hustle. It took me years to transition away and um, when I finally cut those strings and said, I'm done with nursing, um, that was a scary feeling, but also an incredibly liberating feeling. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I got started. That, that's amazing. What, what, a, what a great story from like, you know, I, 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 what I hear the, the most in this is like one, like kind of following your heart and like what you really want to do in life. And I feel that um, it's unfortunately common that we're kind of conditioned to, you know, follow a very traditional path and, you know, go get a stable job. Like you said, health insurance. And I know I'm in Canada, but in the US, that's like a major concern for a lot of people because like there's a big fear that if you don't have health insurance, how are you going to, you know, what ha if something happens? And, and, it's, and it's a scary leap sometimes to take, but like the intuition of like wanting to do something meaningful and something you love and something that positively contribute to the health of people, I think is like at the core, it sounds like of, of why you wanted to, to do this. And I think that's like a very powerful message that, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm have a, a similar story. It just didn't last as long in terms of how long I lasted in a, you know, corporate environment. Um, I, I feel the same way where my tuition intuition was very strong and I just wanted to like, you know, do something I really love. And when I, when I really spent the time and think about it, like growing food was, is, is still the most rewarding thing I can think of to, to do with your time, you know, is, it's just so, uh, like it's just win, win, win all around for everyone involved. And, um, it's just creating more goodness in the world. And I think, um, it's just great to hear your story and, and hear, um, you know, how, how focused you are on, you know, following your intuition and doing something you love and, you know, passing down a really positive message for the next generation, including your, your, your kids. Absolutely. That was a big part of it too, as I was unhappy in my work in the hospital and honestly was struggling with some significant depression, some physical um, ailments that Western medicine was not addressing. I had a lot of um, health issues. So it was like, I'm working in the system. I don't even believe in it. It's not helping me. Um, realizing how interconnected we are as far as our mental health, our physical health, spiritual, emotional, all of that. Um, and, and yeah, it did come down to what could I do? What's the most basic thing? Good nourishment, eating well, um, providing your body with, with 
what it needs to be well. Like that felt so right to me personally and the, and the chance to give that to others. And, you know, as a mom, I definitely really connect with other moms out there who I know want to feed their families well. And, uh, and it can be challenging. And this is like a tiny tangible way that I feel like I can contribute and make it a little bit easier. Microgreens are so easy. They're so easy to eat. They're so easy to incorporate into your meals. Um, and so I, yeah, all of that. Um, you, yeah, no, a hundred percent. Sort of an intuition thing. Yeah, yeah. And well, I think it's sometimes easier to ignore um, your intuition because it, it like the logic makes sense. But I, I feel like lessons I've learned, even just recently in the last few years about following your intuition when it comes to making like big life decisions, like me, you know, moving on from from running Living Earth to uh, focusing on education and like following what, you know, what gave me energy to do. And I feel like a lot of people that start growing migraines, they feel a lot of energy and a lot of like love and excitement to, to be able to like grow these tiny plants and watch them grow every day. And it's just it's beautiful to see. Um, someone like yourself who, who, who teaches people, which we'll get into later on, um, share that, that message, but also share the ability to, um, to transform their life for the better and do something that they truly are passionate about. Cause there's tons of people that love gardening and love working with plants and are maybe doing something that, you know, doesn't resonate as strongly with them for like in and of itself to pay the bills sort of thing. Uh, and the great thing about microgreens is you can pay the bills with them, as uh, as I'm sure we'll get into later on. Uh, but I wanted to ask, when did you kind of start growing microgreens? And then when did you decide that it was like time to, like, I'm going to cut off uh, my full-time job as a nurse and go all in on, on growing microgreens? Uh, yeah, so I started tinkering in like 2016. And by 2018, I stepped away from nursing and decided to uh, give it a, give it an honest go of uh, growing and doing that full time um, to make money and to try something different. It felt like a whole new chapter of my life. So it was a couple years there of working and I sort of phased myself out slowly. It was a security blanket. Having that job was um, and thinking, well, I can always go back. I could always pick up more shifts if I need to. And for a lot of people, I've worked with a lot of growers. I've actually worked with a lot of growers in healthcare that are mm. um, that find a good balance. You know, they're able to cut back some hours at work, grow some microgreens, and find that they love both worlds. For me, it was really about I think my own personal growth and needing to cut ties as a sign to myself that I believed in myself that I could do something else. Because before that, I really had doubts, um, so much insecurity about being successful. I, I feared failure <laughs> and it kept me, it held me back, that fear of failure. It wasn't until I decided to fully commit and really give it a chance and know I, maybe I will fail, but I'm gonna really try. Um, that's what that's when my business took off and I I learned the hard way on a lot of things so I did a lot of things wrong yeah. in the first in that first year uh, but but for me I think I needed to learn that way um, it, it slowed my I, I would have become profitable sooner if I had maybe gotten a little more guidance but um, but there's lots of different ways to be successful with this yeah for sure yeah I think there's there's so there, there's so many different ways like that you can you can grow and sell microgreens like it does like there, there's there's ways that people haven't even explored yet and 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 how to do it that you know that like there'll be in a few years there'll be someone that you know start like is really interested in growing microgreens and has this really creative idea on how to use them or how to sell them in some unique way and then completely transform the industry and I, i'm very excited for that to to happen as more and more in, very intelligent people come into the industry that will inevitably happen and 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 you know i'm very excited for that uh, but I think I think you brought up a good point about um, uh, fear of failure, because I think that is one of the most common things uh, I see that prevent people from getting started. I think um, uh, like the fear is so strong in, in making a, a, a shift that it, it can be overwhelming to to make a decision like that. And I think like what you mentioned about people kind of finding a balance or getting to the point where they're comfortable enough kind of in your, in your situation where you took two years to really figure it out and find a way to, to feel more comfortable in doing something you love rather than something you that doesn't bring you the same kind of uh, a joy or enjoyment in work. And then and then by that point in doing it for a period of time, you can kind of 
make that transition and feel more comfortable. So you don't have to like jump off an airplane to start a, a business. Like there's many different ways to do it, including doing a very slow transition for people that do find the, the fear of failure being overwhelming, which I think we all at some point had that. And then with, you know, in a way, exposure therapy kind of just kind of gets you over that because you realize, oh, it's not that bad to actually fail. There's many benefits to failing, including learning a lot, which is, yeah. I think, you know, a very profound finding from failure. Um, if you view it that way and have that perspective is you gain a ton of insight uh, in yourself and, and, and in your business and anything else uh, from failing. So, yeah, so I'd love to get into like who you sell your products to um, and how that kind of works between different categories. So if you're working with direct to consumer or restaurants or anything else, I'd love to hear who you kind of sell your microgreen products to. Yeah, I wholesale uh, pretty much exclusively now. So I work with a local distributor. And that has been amazing for me. And this is just another example of uh, not limiting yourself. This is not what I envisioned. So much about my business is not what I envisioned when I started. I started growing microgreens because I wanted a break from talking to people. I wanted to just grow. I just wanted to grow. I wanted to have my hands in the dirt. I wanted to be nurturing little greens. I wanted to have my kids with me. I wanted to just be out in the greenhouse or just working, um, growing greens. And now it's like my, like my business has shifted so much. I thought I would sell direct to consumer. Um, I've sold probably to in all the ways, <laughs> except for some of the new ways. Um, I've got some, ex yeah, ex I'm excited about people. Um, it's like you said, new people coming into the industry that maybe are going to even pave other pathways for getting microgreens out to more people. But I sold to farm. I started with farmer's markets. Um, I started with a single restaurant. I told you that. Got into some farmer's markets, made some more connections that way. So I sold to restaurants. I sold to grocery stores. I sold direct to consumer. In the beginning, I was selling to anyone and everyone. Um, I quickly got myself overwhelmed. Um, a lot of hustling. I, I had um, bringing my kids around on deliveries. Uh, that lasted about a year. And I was like, I got to find another way. Uh, and so I found this local distributor. You know, I've lived in this area uh, most of my life, and I never even knew this existed. It's it's relatively uh, new, I guess. Maybe that's partly why. But I encourage new growers to, um, they may not be aware of aggregators, food hubs, distributors in the area. Sometimes um, this, this one does not promote their services. Uh, it, I had to do some sleuthing to even figure out who do I contact? Um, and it was through a connection at the farmer's market. So there's just being open to doors that might open um, wherever you're selling. Uh, that's how I found this local distributor. It's been a game changer for my business. It means I'm getting large orders on my grow schedule ahead of time. Um, I'm able to grow for those. I'm able to drive 10 minutes to my little town that I live in. Someone comes and picks those up, all those boxes up and drives them to a warehouse in Seattle and they go everywhere. So I sell um, through that distributor. I sell to a couple local uh, food delivery systems that drop things off at doorstop. So they, they are a true aggregator for other small scale farms in the area. And that's really their vision is taking that off the plate of the farmer and I say, thank you, gladly, please take it off my plate. Um, it's cut back on not just my delivery time, but so much of my marketing efforts. It's freed up so much time for me to be able to uh, be able to sell through them and have recurring orders with restaurants, uh, independently owned grocery stores uh, that it would be a hassle. They're spread out. So it'd be a hassle for me. I was selling to several um, in the area uh, before and driving around to those. I'm just so thankful for this distributor. So that's that's my sales model now is really just through, I sell, I guess, to a couple local stores real close to me, um, but almost everything goes through the distributor now. If I have someone reach out wanting to buy microgreens, I just direct them there if they're a, a, a store or restaurant, yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's really smart. I, th I think that, that that's a wonderful solution to the challenge of, um, you know, when you're doing direct to consumer or smaller sales volumes, but you're doing large number of customers, then deliveries become very time consuming. And it's, I think it's a great way to start. So I always kind of encourage people to start in that path because it's the lowest risk, easiest bar barrier to entry. And then as you get more experience, you kind of move up the ladder and distributors are pretty much at the end of that, that ladder because they, they do a lot of the work for you and save you a lot of time. Um, 
for, for Living Earth Farm, like I, I don't think we could have scaled the way we did if we didn't work with distributors. But having said that, it's something that has to be at the right timing for the stage of the business you're at, right? Because if you have, you know, five retail customers, like five direct to consumer customers, you probably don't have the space to really switch over to a distributor because they might say, hey, we need a thousand clamshells of pea shoots, like starting in two weeks. And then you just, you, you're not, you're not at that point of capacity. So um, it's interesting that you kind of went down the same, the same path as, as me as well, where distributors are just the, you know, the, the right solution, especially as you value your time more and more as time goes on. And especially for someone like yourself that, you know, you, you have kids and like, you know, I don't have kids, but my, my brother has three kids. I know how hectic it can be and how, uh, how much work it really is to, to, to raise children. So, um, to be able to run a business, do that, like to find those kind of efficiencies in, in customers, I think is just so, so important in the long run to make it, you know, uh, sustainable for, for you as the business owner. Yeah. Yeah. To anyone out there that does have kids, I have been there. If you, I, I had a baby and two little kids and was doing restaurant, uh, you know, a string of restaurant deliveries. So we would all get out and have the baby strapped to me. I'm pushing a cart with boxes. My other kids are trailing and, um, you know, it, it's not sustainable. For me, it wasn't sustainable. If you are doing it and it is working for you, that's amazing. Uh, but there are other options. I'm still a quite a small scale grower and I work with a distributor. So that's another thing I like to highlight because some people think, well, I'm not big enough to work with a distributor. Um, you do need to have your systems really down so that you are able to handle orders and just be really uh, have some open discussions about what, what you are capable of growing. Uh, but there are there are sometimes local distributors sometimes are willing to work with smaller scale growers. Uh, so just knowing that and being open, I just encourage people to be open to things. If something is not working as far as your your sales model, uh, think about what other options might be available to you and don't limit yourself uh, because there may be something out there that you're not even aware of. And for me, for sure, yeah, a distributor has been. A, a total game changer and has allowed me to um, to focus on the growing and the the education side now it freed up a lot of my time yeah that's awesome yeah I was actually in Seattle um, and just a bit north of Seattle uh, last summer and it was I went to um, uh, I can't remember what the name was. it was this great co-op one of the best uh, uh, food co-ops I've ever been to um, and it was just great to see the support for local agriculture there um it was just wonderful like it was my favorite grocery store i think i've ever been to it was phenomenal um and it's just yeah i think more and more areas around the country and around the world are really starting to support that local agriculture so yeah i think that's a great idea to reach out even if you are smaller to reach out to, to distributors because there, yeah there, there's there's a rate like distributors just like you know retail stores there's the whole foods and walmarts and there's like the little mom and pop shop so in distributors is the same thing there's like the really small distributors that are focused on like a very niche part of like fine dining or whatever it is and then there's like the u.s foods and cisco which are like the, right. the mega the the equivalent of like the walmarts and whole foods of the distributor world so yeah it's a great point that there's lots of options available uh, one, one question I had about the growing side of uh, your operation was that you're growing in, I believe, a greenhouse, correct? I have an indoor space as well. So I do a lot of my work in the greenhouse. I do grow uh, seasonally in the greenhouse. Um, uh, okay. Um, although I recently moved. So everything is all shuffled right now for me. Um, and I'm learning that um, flexibility has been the name of the game for me. It's... Um, I've had to learn to be very flexible. Um, I live in a floodplain, so that's another um, issue that I deal with in seasonality and growing in the greenhouse and all of this. So my plan, I love having a greenhouse space. I like growing. Um, if you are brand new to growing microgreens, just I'm gonna be straight up. It is way harder to grow in an unregulated environment like a hoop house, um, an unheated, uninsulated greenhouse like I grow in. If you live somewhere mild like I do um, in Western Washington, it is possible. There are many microgreens varieties that do really well. Um, you just have to adjust your densities. You have to adjust your grow cycles uh, to fit the weather and that can be tricky to, to figure out. So once you have the basics down in a more controlled indoor environment, I have a 
indoor space so um, as well uh, then you if you if you really have your heart set on growing outside I'm telling you it can be done but it, it is tricky in the beginning to figure out because there is a lot more variability yeah for sure yeah like my, my, my dream was always to have uh, a greenhouse and for, st still to this day I don't have a a, a greenhouse yet but I'm, I'm sure one day I will um, but like once I saw, like when I visited other farms that grew microgreens in, in greenhouses, um, I saw that it was it was really challenging to like manage the crop cycle. And, and I'm in a much more extreme climate than you are yeah. in Washington. Um, now you, there's a lot of cloud cover where you are in the winter months, which can make it more challenging. But um, it's it, yeah, that, that was my question: is if you're growing year round in there and how you manage that. But it sounds like it's more seasonal, which makes a lot more sense from. Um, from what I've seen, like there's certain varieties like pea shoots will, will grow no matter, no matter, uh, you know, where you are sort of thing. They just might be slower, but the, the, some can, some crops can be really challenging in a, in a greenhouse in the winter months when there's not much light. So, um, but yeah, so, so I, I think I understand now better that like, you know, the greenhouse is like the place that you enjoy spending time in and working in sort of thing. Um, and as much as you can, you grow in there, but the indoor, uh, like, you know, with the racking and the lights is, is kind of the the way you can kind of do it year round consistently. Right, exactly. Yeah, the g growing outdoors is is not as profitable either, um, just because the growth cycles are longer. Um, but for me, profitability is one goal. It's not the goal for me. Um, I need to be profitable. Uh, I need to make certain amount of revenue um, per month, per year. But for me, also part of the goal is to create a life and a business that I truly love. So I love waking up. I love doing what I do. And that's a big part of it. So a lot of people are like, why do you even do the greenhouse then if you have a nice insulated, you know, indoor space where you can grow faster and more consistently? It's because I love it. I spent so many years under fluorescent lights in the hospital in that very um, unnatural environment that I like to be out where the sun is shining through and all of that. So um, I'm not all business minded. Some of me is very much about like, this is this is my own therapy and self care and my way of living out a life that I love and, and having my, my kids there with me and, and all of that. So I've, I've found a balance, um, but I'm also realistic about filling orders <laughs> in certain crops that, that are gonna do better uh, in a warmer environment, consistently warm environment. And I always germinate in a warm environment. So I have a germ room inside. Um, people see my greenhouse and I want to give them a, don't want to give them a false illusion. Don't try to germinate your trays in a greenhouse that's getting cool at night. It's going to be a nightmare. Um, so at least have a grow tent, have some kind of a germination chamber or room uh, where you are getting, uh, having consistent warm temperatures for your germination, even if you're going to grow outside. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I think that's, that's a great point. Um, I think you, I think you made a really important point of, um, like having, make, having the business work for you and the lifestyle that you want. I think that's like really, really important. Cause like, if, if you, you don't want to create another job for yourself that you don't enjoy, right? Like, like that's, that's the whole point of, you know, ideally being an entrepreneur. Now there's always, when you're, when you're an entrepreneur, there's always certain things that you may not enjoy doing. As an example, I was never a huge fan of, you know, doing accounting, uh, as an example, um, you can always pay someone to do it, but I just decided to do it myself as an example. Um, so there's always something that you don't enjoy, but the goal is, is you want to move towards to create a, a life for yourself that is much more enjoyable, um, while still also, you know, paying the bills and ideally, you know, making like expanding the business if that's what you want. Um, but another thing is like, you know, I, I think because my mindset is always like growth oriented, um, that I, I may, I don't want to say push, but like I encourage people to, to grow their businesses. Um, but there's no actual reason you have to. You can like if someone wants one rack and they just enjoy growing microgreens and they make a little bit of money on the side, they can that that is a totally viable business model. There's nothing wrong at all with having a small scale farm. There's no like success is not like you make more money, you're more successful. It's like success is what you define as success. And like, you know, for, for me personally, like I want to you know, be happy and, and, you know, be present to the world around me and, um, and enjoy nature and, and have enough money to, you know, go do cool things and stuff like that. And that's what I define as success. And I think it's important for people not to think like you have to make some like infinite amount of money or have a farm, a certain size to be successful. It's whatever you define 
success as. And it's really important not to let other people's definitions of success, including mine, to, uh, to persuade you into something that's not good for you. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent with all of that. I, I do think it's really important, which means you need to take the time to really think about it. Like, what do you want? What do you want? What's going to make you feel fulfilled and happy and feel like you are living the life that you want? This is your life here. Like, are you, what do you want? Like, and it's hard because we have all these influences. Yeah. Um, it's part of what kept me in nursing is everybody telling me, oh, you're such a great nurse. You were made for this. This is, oh, you're so lucky to have a job. You know, all these things, this, all this outside stuff. But taking the time to really think about what is, what do I want my day to day to look like? What do I, what kind of life do I want? And creating a business that supports that. And this, you know, I, I didn't do this right out of the gate. I got caught up in the hustle of it. Uh, my first year, it was, I was up packaging till, you know, four in the morning. I had a newborn. It was like crazy. <laughs> so I had to learn to step back and be like, and it was because I kept getting more opportunities and kept getting more opportunities to grow and grow and grow. And it's like scale the business, scale the business. And I had to be very intentional to actually step back and make it smaller to make it be the the business that i really love and that is not something that our culture really uh sell, like looks at and says oh good job it looks like oh you're you've gotten smaller you you haven't succeeded but to know you as the business owner are the one who is making those decisions and so i i just appreciate what you're saying about you defining success and what that looks like for you and not getting caught up even if there are amazing opportunities for growth if that's going to change your business to the point that it's not the business that you wanted and you do ha have kind of created another job for yourself then then that's not ideal either and and it's okay if you make mistakes like if you if you realize you know I am in that hustle like at some point you realize I can't hustle any harder so like I got to figure out here what what am I going to do and maybe that means hiring a team maybe that means scaling back me there's a lot of a lot of things but being intentional and really looking at that inside because no one else is going to do that for you and, and asking yourself those questions and once you know what it is that you want kind of every decision that comes up in your business doing a little check against that and saying is this aligned? You know, the, the reason I, I started this, does this fit? Does this work? Um, and, and going back to that over and over, it's something we talk about a lot in my program with students who are balancing busy lives and trying to figure out how to do this. It's like starting with really, why are you starting a microgreens business? Not just the money part. Like, yes, you're starting it to make some extra money, but what's underneath that? Like, what are you really, uh, what are you really looking for? Uh, and then making sure that your business is fitting in with that reason. Yeah, I think that's that's a really, really important point. Um, I think the intentionality and taking the time to think about the decisions you're making, it sounds so simple, like to say it out loud, but it, it's something that I think we, we, we don't do partially because I think like you said, the influences. So it, it's family, friends, society as a whole, social media, like all these things kind of like see, like slowly subconsciously tell you what life should be as an example or like how you should run your business. Um, but it's really like going inward, um, which I think is something that that uh, we, we very much have in common is like, I don't know if it's a, you know, necessarily introvert thing or it's just something like that, that awareness of wanting to make decisions that really make sense. Um, not what makes sense for others, but what makes sense for you because it's your business, not someone else's business. So I think it's really important to like, you know, take the time to just, I find just honestly, just like people call it meditating, they call it whatever they want. But if you just sit and like, it sounds kind of crazy, but stare into like, you know, a viewpoint or your backyard, whatever, and just think about these things, I think is really, really powerful. I think I've made some of the, my best decisions in my business and in my life by just kind of um, taking a step back, getting outside of the day to day and just thinking about like, okay, what am I actually doing? Um, that I want to do and what am I doing that I don't want to do and how do I move away from what I don't want to do and move more towards uh, what I want to do and then you kind of can take that down into like smaller and smaller steps into like hey, what are actionable steps I can take to actually get to this point um, and I feel like it's something that's not yeah it's just I think it's just not as commonly done as, as it can be and it's something that's free it doesn't cost anything and it's super super powerful 
Yeah, I agree. It's, it does sound so basic, but there's so many people that kind of lose sight of it. Um, and working with other growers or new growers, I find that to be the case a lot, that if we just go back to the basics, and that's what we're doing. We're, we're doing something basic. We're growing food. So it's like, it's, it's really, um, the basics are so important and they're easy to lose sight of unless you are intentionally going back to them. Uh, but I love that. Um, I'm, I'm a big one. Yeah, hundred percent. For, for I, I carving totally out white space in your schedule to whatever you want to call it. I, I agree. I don't want people getting hung up on the word meditate or journal or take a walk, be quiet, whatever it is for you, but like create that space as a business owner um, and not fill every moment with tasks. Cause when you're head down on tasks, you're not seeing the big picture and you, you have to create some space to see the big picture. And especially if you're brand new and kind of starting your business, you really want to, uh, you can avoid the, the first year of hustle where you, you can burn out on anything. You can burn out on microgreens yeah. too. So um, if you're thinking I'm going to leave what I'm doing now because I'm burnt out, I'm going to dive head first into something else. Um, unless you choose to think differently, you likely will just burn yourself out on that too. So it is about um, really taking that time to reflect. A hundred percent. I totally agree. Um, so I love to hear uh, in terms of your farm itself and the education side, like what is an average week kind of look like for, for you and, you know, an average week now? Yeah. So I have really two sides of my business. I have the growing side where I'm growing microgreens for this local distributor. Most of them end up in Seattle. I live about uh, 40 minutes east of Seattle. Um, uh, I live in a great area for microgreens. Microgreens farms are popping up everywhere. There's so many growers now. And I will tell you, the demand has increased incredibly as more growers start to grow. So the more now there's multiple microgreens growers for this little distributor and the demand only increases. So that's another, I just putting that out there. Like if you live somewhere where there's lots of microgreens growers, it's great. If you live somewhere where there's not a lot of microgreens growers, well, you get to, you know, blaze the path there. So it's, it's great both sides. Uh, so I have my, I have my, um, planting day. I have my harvest day. I have a, run a very simplified farm. My, uh, I don't, do you know, Ben Hartman, the lean farm? Um, yeah. I, I love that those principles, uh, I got to the point where I was growing over 50 different varieties. And like I said, I had retail customers and I had every different type of customer. Everything was very scattered. I simplified dramatically. So I grow, I grow four varieties. Um, um, three are my, my, my main, main three are just pea, radish, and broccoli, right? The ones that, that everyone knows. But I will tell you that I may be the most boring microgreens farm, but for me, simplifying it, I, have, I can be more profitable with growing less and spending so much less time because I've become very efficient. And for me, I love it. I love the cycles of this growth. I love how simple and clean the system is. The rest of my life is busy and unpredictable with, with kids. Um, I take care of my, uh, my parents with some health problems. I've got a lot of unknown things from day to day that, that pop up. So having a consistent farm that I grow, specialize really in just those three crops. I do a mix as well. That's my fourth variety. Um, and I do, I grow uh, for orders that I get ahead of time. So everything is kind of planned out for me. That is very helpful. I love those cycles of growth. Um, so I have a planting day, I have a harvest package day and I have a delivery day. So that's kind of my uh, farm. I, I do it independently. So I have someone who could step in in the case of an emergency. Um, that's part of why I love having a really simplified oh, nice. farm as well but I don't have any employees that help me with the growing side. So I'm the one who plants. And, and that's a big reason why I didn't want to scale up my growing is because I know how good it is for me to do that. Um, I, it's therapeutic for me. I, I don't know a better word for it than that. Yeah. The actual planting, it's, it's a form of meditation for me. Um, each, each process, each step, the cycles of it, the repetition of it, 
Uh, so I like keeping it at a scale, a, a, a scale that I can do, which is about 100 trays a week is, is my max. Um, so I'm a small scale grower and a lot of people are like, oh, that's tiny. It's like, this is very intentional that I have kept it at this size. Mm -hmm. um, in the summertime, um, sometimes I'll only do 40 trays a week. I cut back considerably in the summertime, partly because the demand decreases and partly because my kids are home and um, life is busy. So I have a pretty small scale operation. I can run it efficiently with not, it does not take me very long um, because I'm just doing those three to four varieties uh, and, and my processes are very streamlined. My setup is very lean. And so my margins are good. Um, uh, so I feel great about that part of my farm. The other part of my business is the education side. And this is something that I had zero intention. It wasn't even like a little tiny idea in the back of my mind when I started my farm. I started my farm purely to grow microgreens, see where that went. It was COVID, it was 2020, right? That people started reaching out to me. Um, I started putting some stuff out on social media, which was a big push for me. Part of that was just an exercise in me getting outside of my comfort zone. Um, I've been someone who had sworn I would never be on social media. So, so it, was a, it was a step to say, you know, this is a way you can show what you're doing. Uh, and so people started reaching out to me via social media and uh, asking, how did you do this? And it was because COVID, right? People were in a place that they wanted to have access to healthy food. They were really concerned about their own immunity, wellness, all of that. And they, the idea of being able to make money from home, having flexibility was very appealing. So I had a lot of people. So I started just telling people, trying to walk people through it. And it, it's, it takes some time, right? To explain everything. And so, yeah. um, uh, I thought I'm going to try to package this up. I'm going to try to put it together. Um, I had done some teaching. I did a lot of in-person workshops, teaching people how to grow for themselves at home, just other moms, like other groups of like, here, you can do this with your kids. It's so fun. This is how I got started. Super passionate, teaching people, empowering people to grow something for their family, just because I know how, how good it feels to do that um, and to be able to have fresh greens to harvest and add to your meals and all that. So I had kind of a, a I had done a little bit of teaching and just in person, but I thought, what if I took it online, which was also intimidating for me because I am very, uh, I'm not a tech savvy person. Um, that, so it, it was a learning curve for me, uh, but I thought this is a way that I could reach a lot of people, um, different time zones, different whatever. Um, people who are, have the same interest. I, uh, the one part of nursing I miss is that human connection, that advocating, that helping people, um, just that human, human connection. Right? Yeah. I know that I am, I know that I can, um, I can advocate with people. I can help them to believe in themselves. I can show them how to do something. I can teach them. You do a lot of teaching and nursing. And so that was the one part I missed. So I thought, well, maybe this is going to kind of fill that one thing that I miss is I'll be able to help help some people like me who are also looking to get into this, but maybe feel like they don't know how to get started. And so I put together uh, an online course and I love online courses. So I kind of had an idea because I've gone through many for different things. Um, uh, starting with microgreens, I I learned how you can go down the rabbit trails of, of YouTube and get so overwhelmed and lost. Yeah. And you find one video and then you can't find it again. And other things are all the conflicting information, which is why I've gravitated towards online courses when I'm learning other things, because it's all organized. So I thought, what if I did that for microgreens? Uh, and what if I did it specifically sharing how I did it, like how I learned as a mom, as someone who was juggling a lot of different things, I started with baby steps. And I am here to tell you that consistent baby steps can add up to a profitable business. Um, and so it can feel really overwhelming. I know that feeling of overwhelm. I know that feeling of self doubt. Um, and so that's really what I speak to. The program does outline, um, how to grow microgreens, how to grow awesome microgreens, um, having really consistent systems. Um, I focus a lot on marketing and selling because that is where a lot of people uh, yeah. get intimidated or feel like I, 
I th think I could grow them, but I could never sell them. That's what I hear from people a lot. I don't think I could sell them or who would I sell them to? And just recognizing that marketing and selling is a skill, just like growing. You can learn how to do it. Um, you can learn how to be great at it. It's just a skill. And so the, the program that I have now, it's evolved. So it was pretty basic, bare bones when I started. Now it's, it's evolved and, and it's uh, pretty comprehensive. Uh, includes a lot, uh, a lot of community and support. Um, people, uh, a lot of people need that or want that. Um, to keep going so you can feel motivated you can get started you can you can be great at growing microgreens that does not always translate to a profitable business um, and some people just need the encouragement they need the support they need the marketing tools they need the um they need the mindset work so this is something i've also yeah. brought into the program not everyone is 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 in um game for doing thought work, but I will tell you it is what has grown my business more than anything else, um, is my own personal development. The, the business growth and the personal development for me have gone hand in hand. And I've, and I've seen it with so many other people too, that once you're willing to do that work um, on your mindset and kind of uncover your own limiting beliefs around your own self-concept and all of this, that is when the doors just open wide for you. You can do anything. So, yeah. and I was nervous to bring this into the program because I thought, no, people just want to learn how to grow microgreens, but people have been so receptive to it and it's made all the difference because I didn't just want to sell people an online course, like buy the online course. Um, I want people to actually be able to make a difference um, and, and build a business that's going to last, a business that they love. Kind of what we've talked about already is not, is, is getting in tune with that intuition. And so you are creating what the life that you want, the business that you want, you're having the impact that you want. And I don't think it can be done apart from mindset work. Any successful business owner, if you look at them, they, they usually have uh, some coaching in their life. They have someone who is yeah. helping them to step back. It's hard to see yourself in your own thoughts if you don't have uh, input. So I hired a business coach um, several years ago, and it really changed my world. Um, so I add I added coaching into the program. Um, I have a small group outside of the program also, and it's been it it it, it truly lights me up watching people um, that reach their full potential just when they unlock kind of. We keep ourselves so stuck sometimes um, with our own minds, so it's a big part of it as well. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it's it's crazy how much similar mindset stuff we have between us because, like, I'm the same way. Where you know, I I, I see the value in, in in hiring coaches, and I hire coaches my, myself. You know, like I have a business coach that you know helps me see that you know business and personal development growth are not separate; they are the same thing. And if you view it that way, then you're going to get two in one, you're going to get business growth in, in having more sales or what, whatever your goals are that you define success as. And you're also going to get a lot of mindset changes and perspective shifts, shifts and reframing on, you know, different challenges you have. And, you know, and I think, I think it's, it's transformed my life and it sounds like it's the, it's the same for you. It's, it's very transformative in running a business, uh, and just enjoying your life on a daily basis by being able to like reframe things from being a challenge to being a learning opportunity is like, you know, a, a big one. Cause it, it's, it's, I found that's quite transformative as an example. Um, yeah. And, and I think just having that all in one, I think is great. Cause I think you're right. Like just growing microgreens or just um, having mindset stuff could be two separate things, but combining them together allows people that maybe haven't started a business to get, best of both worlds. They want to start a migraines business, but they also want to shift on the personal side, which will translate into the business side. I think that's like a great combination that, you know, there's lots of courses in and of themselves on uh, mindset, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I've, I've taken some and I'm sure it sounds like you have as well. Um, and it's, it's great to be able to incorporate that into something like migraines. Cause I think it's such a transformative business. Um, and another point you brought up early, which I've noticed myself, uh, but it seems that not everyone necessarily believes it, but I've seen it happen, which is that um, the more microgreens farms that pop up, the more demand there is. So it's yeah. not like there's 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 all of a sudden there's so many microgreens farms and no, like everyone's losing out because there's less uh, market opportunity. 
this is a very new market and most people still are not fully aware of microgreens. Maybe they've heard of it once. They probably haven't tried it. Like the market potential is massive and the more people that grow them, the more demand there is. And that'll happen for a very long time because microgreens are still a very small niche compared to like baby salad greens and, um, you know, other type of vegetables that are more commonly consumed on a you know weekly basis, like potatoes and tomatoes and lettuce. So I think microgreens will be much more of a staple um, mm -hmm. in, in in the diet across the world. And it's it's just starting. And it's really exciting to be at like the forefront of a new, in, like a relatively new industry. Like you think of agriculture as like 10,000 years old, and then you have microgreens, which is like really 20 years old, which is kind of crazy to think about. There wasn't really microgreens before then, or at least it wasn't a product that people purchased. Um, and it's just crazy to see how much transformation has happened in the last 10 years. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of transformation since you started as well in 2016 yeah it's i mean it's still in its infancy i think it's and you get once you start growing microgreens you get tunneled in and so you are surrounded by microgreens you know your social media your other you, like you're focused on it so you think maybe that it's saturated because people say that to me all the time they're like i think the market is saturated just pull random people you know talk to the other parents at your kid's soccer team I bet none of them ate microgreens that week. You know, it's like the general population is not consuming microgreens on a regular basis. And I, my hope is that it will become a staple because it just makes sense. Um, it makes sense. It's, it's everything about microgreens is so exciting. I mean, just that how fast they grow, how you can get them so locally. When you look at our, the food distribution uh, systems and how it, there's so many big problems, right, with our, but here is one little way that we can eat something super nutrient dense that we either grow ourselves or is grown very close to us. And that's a step in the right direction. And, and that's why I get so excited. Uh, and yes, the, the demand has increased so much around me that I could scale up my growing. I could 100% sell as many microgreens as I could grow. The reason I moved into education was I started thinking, how can I have an even larger impact? As I'm seeing a lot of microgreens grown in the area, there's there's space to grow more, absolutely. For me, teaching other people how to do this, the exponential impact of that, when I think about them growing in their communities and their lives changing and their kids' lives changing because their life has changed, it's that is the best feeling in the world. Uh, and I have the most amazing people in my program. I mean, they just inspire me. They're hardworking, good hearted. Um, that's another thing. When you see the big problems in the world, you can get so down. And I definitely have, have had times in my life that have felt dark because of just the big problems in the world. Um, but you, there's a light when you see so many good people that are passionate about growing food, are passionate about, about nourishing their communities, about creating a lifestyle that really um, just fosters an ability for them to be present with their kids, all this good stuff. It feels so good. And, and I feel so honored to be able to be tapped into that with through something like an online program. It's like we meet together every week live. So I get to see people's faces. We get to answer questions about microgreens. We get to chat about all kinds of things that come up. And it's just so rewarding. I feel like I'm able to just see into communities all over the world, really, this, this movement is, is spreading everywhere. And so, yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That that's, it, it's just crazy how much like, uh, synchronicity there is between our, our stories. Cause I, I feel the same way. Like I, I got to a point where I, I kind of took it a different path in terms of like, I, I wanted living earth to be bigger, be like an automated larger scale farm, but it, it got to the point where I was like, okay, like how, how can I really best utilize my skill set and time, like, you know, transform, uh, you know, the world as much as I can to be a better place. As cliche as that sounds, um, I, I, you know, really had, you know, I wouldn't say an existential crisis, but like I had like a really uh, uh, deep conversation with myself and understanding like, okay, I have this limited amount of time in my life. Um, what, what, it, what, how can I have the biggest impact for the positive? Um, and, and that came down to like teaching people what, what I've been doing in the same capacity that, that, you know, in, where it's like, okay, I could, I could teach, a, you know, a thousand, 2000, 5,000 people, whatever, whatever it is, it, the sky's really the limit because of, of how scalable uh, education really is with the internet. Um, so you could teach people the skill set, have them be able to, uh, 
avoid all the headaches, all the challenges that you had and I had starting out and just like skip almost, it's almost like a cheat code in a video game. You just like kind of skip to level 25 and then, you know, you, you have to do level 25 to hundred, but instead of going zero to 25, which is usually the hardest, generally you get to go right to level 25 in the video game of running a business. And mm -hmm. I think it's just like a great, um, you know, uh, way to spend time. I, I find a, a, an immense amount of, of satisfaction and enjoyment getting to see, you know, students, students and, and clients kind of just succeed and scale up their farm and move into a warehouse space because a lot, a lot of people that, you know, that's, that's their goal. But again, that's not, you know, the goal. It depends on what you want, like I said earlier. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. It's it, like, you know, migraines are such a win-win for, for, you know, everyone involved and to be, you know, I'm very grateful to be part of this industry and, and it's just been uh, a wonderful ride um, to, uh, to get to experience like, you know, all these other people coming into the industry and, and experiencing what it's, what it's like to get away from the nine to five corporate world and do something that you're really excited for. Yeah. 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 I feel the same way about having multiple, like more online courses, more programs. Like to me, that is, that is great. Uh, just like when more people are growing microgreens, it increases awareness and the demand increases. It's, it's just a natural progression. Having more educators to help people, like you said, get over those first hurdles, not have to reinvent the wheel and struggle through the, the very basics. So it's a new industry, but a lot of the basics have been kind of figured out. So you can take that information and, and having uh I mean, you and your farm have been a huge inspiration just to see what's possible. Even for me, who I, that's not the, the, the model that I aspire to, but I'm, I love that it's there. I love that it's possible. I love to see someone doing it and to know that it's out there. And I encourage, there are, there are many students growing on a larger scale than me in my program. And I think that's great. It's like, there's so many yeah. different ways of doing it. And same with education. Like if you are new to microgreens and either you are struggling in your business or you are thinking about starting, find someone to learn from. It doesn't matter who, find someone that resonates with you. Look, a program that's gonna fit, there's so many different learning styles. I feel like that having kids, you learn that quickly. There, I, I have three yeah. kids, I will tell you, they are so different in the way their minds work. And so I have one child who's very creative. I have another who's really numbers oriented. It's like, find, find the, someone that is going to speak to your learning style and having more people create more online resources and education, I think only helps the movement. So, um, I mean, I was stoked to get to talk to you cause I, I followed you and I know a, a lot about what you do from afar. And so, and I just think it's, it's awesome to have different options so people can think what would help me the most and be like, well, this is, I know I'm this type of thinker, or this is, you know, I can just tell that this is going to help me find you have options now. That's the, such yeah. a cool thing. Um, you've got options in your in your learning. Get support. Um, s believe in your business. Uh, there's a lot of people, I think, who are stuck in this. Well, I don't want to spend money on something if I don't know if it's going to work. It's you got to if you're going to be a successful business owner, you have to be willing to think of this as a business. You know, do I think I will recoup my investment in this learning? If yes, then that's a good business decision. Um, and if you truly don't think that you will, then don't do it, you know, learn on your own. And there are people who they're, they're gonna learn best on their own, figuring, piecing, the information is out there. You don't have to buy an online program to be successful, but you will get profitable sooner, I think, Yeah. <laughs> if you do. And for so sure. it's, it's, and that's what I feel like for me, it's like, I figured it out, but I would have been profitable a lot sooner if I had taken someone's framework and started from there. Like you said, gotten to start yeah. at that level 25 instead of starting at level one. Um, so I love that there's more online programs, courses, um, just learning opportunities available to people. And I highly encourage you to find someone to learn the basics from. There's so much that you still have to figure out for yourself, even in growing. I tell people this all the time, like this is a framework to get you started. You need to pay attention <laughs> to your own greens. You need to figure out, you need to dial in your system in your environment. And I think that's consistent uh, with other microgreens growers I, I talk to would say the same thing that it's, you do, you have to, even though it seems like it would, it would follow, right? Um, there's, there's little variabilities that make yeah. a big difference. So 
get the framework and then you can just dial in your system and get really, really good at growing. You have to have a consistent, high quality product if you want to be profitable. So I talk a lot about mindset and all that is important, but you also need to be great at growing microgreens and have really great product. That's why the demand for me has increased so much is because I have a reputation now for my product. So I hardly have to do anything to market my microgreens and that's great, but that comes from years of learning to grow microgreens well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think, you know, uh, you know, I, I was very uh, uh, glad to, to have you on because like, you know, some people might be like, oh, you both are educators. Why are you having, uh, you know, Laura on the podcast sort or of thing? And I, 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 I started when I started my business, I had that mindset. And it like as I saw the reality of uh, the, the business world uh, unfold before my, before my eyes, I realized, hey, like, you know, competition is not what I learned in business school, like not even remotely close. I don't even know why they teach it that way. I think collaboration is like just win win. And uh, and I'm you know very, very glad to be able to share your story and share all the amazing work you're doing. And I, I think it's just it's wonderful um, to, to you know be able to have this conversation and uh, and learn from you. And uh, so just just to close off, I always ask this question to everyone, which is if you can go back in time to when you started your farm and meet the younger Laura, what advice would you give her to set her up for success? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I use a similar question with a lot of my coaching clients. I like it. Um, I would speak to my younger self. Two things, I think. Um, one, I would encourage her to constrain, to discipline herself, to constrain, um, to, be, to, be, to build a profitable business. So for me, that was the ticket to profitability was constraining, like simplifying, simplifying the crops, simplifying the, the grow system. I grow all my crops now on a same day, you know, 10 day cycle. Everything is consistent. That took a lot of constraint because I was growing lots of varieties to lots of people, all of that. That helped me reach profitability. The other thing I would tell her, if I could look back, um, would say would be about the personal growth and about checking every business decision against the why you started this in the first place. And that is to do with sustainability of the business, the long the longevity of the business. So I would say to be profitable, discipline yourself to constrain, to be lean. Uh, in your setup and to be simplified in your customer base and your crops and for longevity of your business and sustainability of your business, make sure that you are creating the business that you truly love and that you are continuing your own personal growth and making sure that the two are really aligned. Uh, so that's, I guess, what I would say. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I think, I think that's, that's really great advice to, uh, to share with others. Yeah, I think that's, so, so important. So uh, thank you so much for, for coming on, Laura. Um, if listeners want to connect more with you or learn about your program or your, you know, where they can find you online and social media. Yeah, I'm most active on Instagram. So at Hand Grown Greens, that's my farm's name and my uh, Instagram handle. Um, you could also just look at my website too, handgrowngreens.com. I've got some free resources there. They're pretty easy to find and you can get more information about my course and my online program there as well. So um, awesome. and reach out. You can always DM me um, on Instagram or, or shoot me an email through my website. Either way is great. Yeah, that's that's how I got a hold of Laura. So, um, you know, if I can, then you guys can as well. So awesome, Laura. Thanks so much for coming on. This was a phenomenal conversation. I, I appreciate your time so much. So thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Jonah. Thanks for tuning in to the Microgreens Mastery Podcast. To access a wealth of insights, just click the subscribe button, stay notified about each new episode, and enjoy all of this wisdom for free. If you're ready to supercharge your Microgreens business, visit microgreensconsulting.com for a gold mine of guides and resources. We've transformed thousands of Microgreens businesses, and you're invited to join the success story. Let's stay connected. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok at Microgreens Consulting for exclusive content and expert tips and wisdom. If you found this episode insightful, please leave us a review, spread the word, and let's share Microgreens magic with the world. Until next time, let curiosity fuel your growth and may happiness be your harvest. Happy growing, everyone.